Yo, what's up? I'm going to share with you my Magsorg PvP build. This is the one take, no script, my first time making a build video, so I hope it works out. Uh, my build has really, really high base stats, and I try to have a really good mix of offense and defense with the amount of damage happening now in Elder Scrolls Online with the Blackwood patch. Also, before I even get into my stats, I truly believe the viability of this build with the next patch, Waking Flames, I mean, Waking Flame, actually. Uh, should be just as good. I'm going to try to adjust it and I have some ideas and some new builds that I'm going to try once the patch hits, but this is what we have going on right now. So when we buff up here, we have uh, 4.1, almost 4.2 thousand spell damage with 47k maximum mag, 2100 magical recovery, Pretty solid health recovery and stem recovery as well. As you can see, the base HP is 28k and it could actually be higher. I'm missing my level 9 Undaunted passive here. So it could be it could be 3% higher. That would be a significant upgrade. But as of right now, we have 48k max mag, 28.3k max health. 19.2k max stem with really good base recovery and really good spell pen. Our resistances are also pretty good in this build, especially in the front bar, because we're getting our minor resolve. We have 29.8, almost 30,000 spell resist and 23, basically 24k fizz resist. My crit res is also pretty high as I'm having. I'm running full impen on my build. Now for the actual items I'm running on in this build, for my mythic of choice I'm running the gaze for obvious defensive purposes. I feel like the block mitigation reduction isn't really a factor for magic assort as we don't rely on block for survivability. Uh, it allows me to push my damage shield really really high. I have of course, this is like not in PvP and with CP, but I have 17k here. Uh, on my PvP non-CP build on Battlegrounds, I have about like a 10,000 shield. Uh, so this is really all around a solid option for survivability. The 4k armor is really, really nice. Health recovery, I mean, it does help. It's even more survivability, so I love this item. Uh, for the actual sets, I have Crafty Alfiq. This good old classic set for Mag Zork, hard to replace her. And for my last set, I have Spinners. The reason why I'm running Spinners is because Max Magica actually gives me survivability as well. This set gives me like a nice and balanced mix of having some survivability stats while having pretty good damage. Magicka Sork is currently doing pretty good damage with your combos, so you don't really need a whole lot of offensive stats to be able to kill people. The really hard players to kill are going to be the tanky players with a whole lot of resistances, making spinners a pretty viable choice to fight, I would say, any player, any build. Uh, you have a few options here though that you could change. If you don't have access to mythic items, it's not really a problem as you have a few options. Uh, the first one being just using another One Piece. So you have a One Piece, One Piece, Tommy House, and One Piece Warm Under for really, really nice ma uh, maximum magicka and stamina. Or you could run sets like Engine Guardian or even Balrog is actually not a bad choice. Uh, you also have a variant for this build if you wanted to run Necropotence over Crafty Alfiq with a pet, you could 100% do that. The skills that I would remove to run a pet if I had to really choose would be remove Bound Aegis from my front bar, and I would probably have to remove Power Surge from my back bar in order to have the pet. For the traits on my gear, I am currently running 5 pieces of impenetrable for that nice, nice and needed crit resistances. 
It really helps us against those really strong stamina night blades with insane amounts of crit damage. The other two pieces I have currently are the vine. The vine is boosting my current Mundo Stone, which is the Magicka Recovery one. Usually when I'm playing no CP, which is basically all the time, I choose to run the Atronach over the Mage Mundos, which gives you 2000 maximum Magicka. The effect of the Magicka Recovery is almost needed, I want to say, for no CP. Now for CP, you can totally try running the Mage, that's pretty much personal preference. On my jewelry, I have two pieces with spell damage and one with magical recovery. I would say that gives me the sweet spot compared, uh, combined sorry, with my race, which is the Breton. The Breton provides so much magical sustain with magical mastery, reducing the cost of all of my magical abilities in 7%. It also gives us a little bit of Magicka recovery here and Max Magicka. High Elf and Dark Elf are also really really good choices. I actually just rerolled from High Elf to Breton and the main reason was actually aesthetically. I don't really like the High Elf looks to be honest, but that's out of context. High Elf is really really good. The spell damage you get from it is really nice, the recovery, the stamina sustain actually that you get from it is really really nice as well. So Dark Elf really good, High Elf really good, Bren really good. The main reason I switched to Bren as well, well the second main reason is the next patch as uh, medium is going to be viable and we're going to lose sustain, I'm trying to compensate it already by switching my race. Alright, now for the last part we have our skills of choice here. The first one being our spammable crushing shock. Beautiful spammable with a lot of damage and that interrupt on cast ability that people are using. The second one I have inner light for the maximum magicka and the major prophecy. Then crystal frag for the big burst that we have on mag Sork. I am currently using front bar shield with hardened ward. And for the flex spot, I have a Bound Aegis as my last skill for the Maximum Magicka. I am a pretty big fan though of switching one of these two for the Execute as you can combo it really well. And for BGs, especially for Deathmatch, it's pretty useful to secure your kills. So for Battlegrounds, I would say it's okay to take the loss on the Max Magicka and run the Execute if you're a fan of it. Just try for yourself. Now on the back bar we have Power Surge. Power Surge is pretty good for the little heal that it provides you and the access to major sorcery. The second one is Boundless Storm for the tankiness that we get from it with major resolve and the movement speed you can actually kite a lot of people using it. I am running back bar hunting curse as I personally find no issue in switching back and forth to, between my offense and defense. If you don't like Honey Curse on the back bar, you can easily just swap it with your shield. It's personal preference. For my main source of healing here, I have Rapid Regen. Sometimes when I'm playing with a group, I can switch to the other morph that I totally forgot the name that heals other people as well. But generally, I just want to be selfish and keep this to heal my ass up. Uh, and my last skill is obviously Streak, which is a source of crowd control and survivability. Offense, defense, and pretty much the bread and butter of this class, in my opinion. For my defensive ultimate, I have Life Giver. It's actually a pretty huge uh, playmaking potential tool. For my offensive ultimate, I'm currently using Power Overload. Power Overload provides Sork the necessary pressure that it needs to take down tankier opponents, especially people that can cleanse your curse and really just mess up your combo. Uh, there are times though where I do I do switch to Meteor. I think Meteor is still pretty good and you can combo really nicely into it. But as of right now, the power that you get from Power Overload is real nice. So try for yourselves, but I'm a pretty big fan of it. Alright, so for the consumables on this build, we are running the Tristat Potion. 
In my opinion, it's the best potion in the game for PvP. It just provides me everything that I need with survivability and sustain. Uh, my food of choice currently is the Sugar Skulls, as we really, really love having big, fatty main stats on this build. So it provides me everything that I need with HP, Max, Magicka, and Stamina. Uh, my last observations for this video would be that the build is still going to be viable in the next patch, just the way it is now. I don't think that running 5 lights armor pieces is going to stop being viable, especially for Max Orc, because we need that Max Magicka for basically everything. It's a good source of damage, it's a good source of uh, shields, you know. Um, I will be posting the video for my new build and my adjusted version of this build here that I'm going to have. And um, I think that's pretty much it. I hope people actually watch this video. Alright, peace out.